when you are working with Excel, sometimes you uh, have a set of assumptions that may change or you may have different assumptions uh, based on different scenarios. So, for example, if you are trying to um, come up with a budget for a company in a specific year, you may have um, one scenario in that um, what we call like the best scenario, one is the intermediate and one is the worst scenario. So what if the economic conditions in the country um, became very um, positive towards business? What if it is actually adversary to the uh, business corporations? And what if it is normal, if it's the same? So these, these are three scenarios. Now, if I tell you what are you going to do if you have these three different assumptions, one person may say, okay, we may have three different uh, Excel sheets each for each scenario. But Excel allow you or provide you the tools to, with one sheet, run different scenarios. So I don't have to um, duplicate the sheets. I can have just one sheet and run different scenarios on it. I can also run a summary report, a scenario analysis summary report that tells me in one sheet again or in one report what will happen if the worst condition prevails, if the current condition continue to prevail, or if best conditions prevail. So again, for uh, we use scenario analysis when we have different assumptions or different scenarios for the Excel sheet that we are working on. Instead of duplicating the sheet, we create different scenarios and we can show the results using any one scenario, like best scenario, worst scenario, normal or uh, same current scenario. And we can also run a report that allow us to compare all three together. So you don't have to duplicate and you can also see uh, the effect on all three. Now the current Excel sheet that you see in front of you have um, enrollment uh, numbers for uh, three or four um, summer uh, sports clinic. So we have, we are assuming that we will have 500 softball enrollees or um, um, members enrolled and 1,000 baseball, uh, 200 in soccer and 800 in golf. The t-shirt you, you need like to um, have uh, or you one of the things that you will be offering is a t-shirt for the team members. So the cost of a t-shirt um, is $10, but you are going to sell it for $16 uh, for the softball. The cost for baseball is a little bit higher. It's $11 and you're going to sell it with, for $17. So you want $6 uh, revenue from softball and baseball when it comes to soccer because you have a few numbers and you know people may not pay. So um, you will charge only 15 with $5 markup and uh, same thing for God. So you will, uh, it will cost you 15 and you will sell it for 20. The first thing that we will learn today is how can I name cells? Now, if we click on cell B5, which is the in number of enrollees in softball, we notice that in the name box right here, the name of the cell is B5. Now, in order to make formulas more readable, we are going, the first thing that we are going to do today is changing uh, the name of the cell. So instead of it being named B5, I'm going to highlight it and I will type in softball. Remember, we are not typing a value in the cell. So the 500 continue to exist inside of B5, but B5 is no longer called or it's not referred to as B5, it's referred to as softball. And you have to, after you type in softball, you have to hit enter. 
So now you can see that when you click inside of B5, you no longer see B5 in the name box, but you see softball. Now we'll do the same for baseball. Highlight, type, and do not forget to hit enter because otherwise if you just like move and tag the, the tab, it will not change the name. And this is important for the scenario analysis report. If we do not change the name of the cells, then the report will tell you B5, B6, B, or B5, C5, D5, E5, and you will not understand. But now you will be able to tell that this is for softball, this is for baseball, this is for soccer, and this is for golf. So this is what um, we have. If you click now on the name list box, you can see all four names. Baseball, golf, soccer, and softball. So. Now we will start entering formulas um, in order to calculate the total revenue and the total expenses of, uh, for, from the t-shirts. So if I click inside of B12, B12 is equal to, now, one thing that I've noticed some students doing over the exam is they try to enter values in cells that are calculated. The, the, the whole objective of Excel <clears throat> is to calculate values for you. So you, you never enter a calculated value. If you want to calculate something, if we want to calculate total revenue from softball, I will start with an equal sign. I will click inside of the revenue for one t-shirt and I will multiply it by the number of members or enrollees in the softball. So now the formula reads B8 multiply by softball and I hit enter. And now I want to calculate for the baseball. Again, it is equal to the price for one multiplied by the number of enrollees for baseball. So again, the formula reads as C8 multiplied by baseball. Next one equal to price of one for soccer multiplied by the number of enrollees for soccer. The third one is equal to um, price of the golf t-shirt multiplied by the number of enrollees in golf. Now, my total expenses will be the, the expense of each multiplied by the other. So now um, I've already calculated the uh, formulas for row 12. I can now copy the formulas to row 13. And now you can see that that is equal to B9 multiplied by the softball. It is C9 multiplied by the baseball. D9 multiplied by soccer and E9 multiplied by God. Let's, let's take a minute and explain why this happened. How come uh, Excel find, like automatically uh, adjusted for total expense? When we wrote the formula for the revenue, we said that the revenue from softball will be equal to the price of one t-shirt, which is the B8 multiplied by the number of enrollees in softball. Now, the B8, the B8 is what we call a, a relative reference. It doesn't have any dollar sign before or after. And, and I, I will talk in the review, um, the Excel review, 
about that. But for now, when you do not see anything beside um, a cell address, like a dollar sign before or after the B, that means I am using relative reference, which means if I copy the formula in B12 to B13, Excel will change the B8 to B9 right away. And you can see. Why? Because I wrote the formula. When I wrote the formula, I said use B8, which means if I want to copy it to the next row, change the B8 to B9. And you can see that the formula now for baseball was C8 multiplied by baseball. When we copied that formula to the next row, uh, it became C9 multiplied by baseball. I, I, I want to make sure that everyone knows how to copy formulas from one row to the next. So I'm going to undo. You highlight the set of formulas and see that uh, dark black box at the bottom right of the range. Just drag it one uh, row down and it will automatically copy the formula to the next, to the next row. Now, we want also to decrease the decimals. So you can, at the top, you can see decrease decimal and we want to remove all of the decimal places. So we'll click twice and now all of my decimal places are removed. We want now um, to calculate the profit and the profit is equal, of course, to the revenue minus the expenses. And I click inside of the cells. I, you remember, any calculation must start with an equal sign. And it is equal to B12 minus B13. And I hit end. Now, can I copy that formula to the rest of the row? The answer is yes. And because the formula, again, as we said, doesn't have any dollar signs, that means I'm telling Excel automatically change when I copy it to the rest of the row. So if this is, if this column B and I'm trying to copy it to column C, but I'm still in the same row, then the formula will change to C12 minus C13 and then D12 minus D13 and E12 minus E13. Let's do that. So let's look here. It's C12 minus C13, D12 minus D13, E12 minus E13. This is one of the powerful tools of Excel, is your ability to copy formulas from one row to the next row or from one column to the um, subsequent columns, columns to the right. So now we have calculated the total revenue, the total expenses, and the profit. What if more people enrolled or less people enrolled? What will happen to my profit? And this is what we call different scenarios. Scenarios, other scenarios may occur. So my assumptions for enrollment for softball, baseball, soccer, or golf may be either higher or lower. So I want now to, um, to say that, or to add a different scenario, a worse scenario and a best scenario. My scenario, my different scenarios are different assumptions regarding uh, enrollment. So I'm going to highlight the enrollment and I will go to the data tab and I will choose what if analysis and scenario manager. And there are no scenarios, so I'm going to click on add scenario. And my first scenario is um, that I will have 500 people enroll in softball, 1,000 in baseball, 200 in uh, soccer and 800 in golf. So that's my initial scenario. So I'm, I'm going to name that scenario initial. Now I'm going to 
these are the cells that are going to change B5 to E5. And I will hit OK. And these are the values. B for softball, we have 500. For baseball, 1,000. Soccer, 200. And golf is 800. So I'm going to click OK. And now I have an initial scenario. Let's now create a new scenario, which is a best case scenario. So I'm going to click on add. I would name my scenario best case. And now the soccer will no longer be 500. It will be 400. Uh, I'm sorry, that um, soccer will be from 200 to 400. So I'm increasing soccer. And golf, instead of, 18, uh, of 800, I will have 1,600. So I'm assuming that more people will enroll in soccer and in golf. And I'm going to click OK. And that's my best case scenario. Now I'm going to add a third one. And that's the worst case scenario. And... There, I'm assuming that soccer will only have 100 and that the golf will have 400 only. So now I have three different scenarios. Let's see what happened if the worst scenario occurred. So if I click on worst scenario and I click show, see my profits have dropped quite a bit. What if the best scenario happens? So I highlight best scenario and I click on show. And now again, a totally different set of profit occur. So this is my initial. So now I want to compare all three. So I want in F14, so let's close this. I want to add all of my profit. So I want to sum from B14 to E14. One way is by entering the formula equal to sum and I highlight the numbers and hit enter. So I know that um, in the case, in the initial scenario, I am going to uh, have a total of 14,000 as revenue. Now, again, if I want to see what will be my revenue if uh, the worst scenario occur, I'm going to go and click on what if analysis scenario manager and I will click on worst case and I will show and now in the worst scenario or the worst case my revenue will drop to 11,500 in the best case my scenario will um, or my revenue will go up to 1900.
So I want to call that cell, I will name that cell total profit. Now I want to run the report that I told you about to compare all three scenarios. So again, in the what if analysis and scenario manager, I want to run a summary. And it says, what is it that you want to compare? We want to compare um, the F14 for the softball, the baseball, the soccer, and the golf. So now I have a summary report, and as you can see, it says that I have different assumptions. The changing cells are the, the actual the assumptions uh, for softball, baseball, soccer, and golf. There is the initial, um, and in the initial, I'm assuming that I will have 500 softball, 1,000 baseball, 200 soccer, and 800. And then I have a best case where soccer goes up to 400 and the golf goes to 1600. And then a worst case where the soccer goes down to 100 and golf goes down to 400. My total profit under the initial scenario is 14,000. And then under the best case is 19,000. Uh, and the, the worst case is 11,500. The current values is what currently is showing and you can definitely uh, delete that, that column because it doesn't add much value. So just highlight it and hit delete. So you can see the three cases only. Now you can see that you have, um, like these are like the expand button. You can expand them. So you can see the total profit only, or you can see details. Of course, this is a very small report, but in larger reports, there are a lot of details that uh, executives may not be interested in. They only want to focus on a specific area. So that's the total profit. So you can expand or collapse uh, what you can see on the report. So that's all for